Hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Heavensward Dungeon Lore series. In this series, I hope to explain things you might not know about Final Fantasy XIV dungeons, as well as discuss their individual stories and lore. This episode's dungeon is Som Arl. Ever since the first dragons came to Eorzea, they chose to make a home and hideout within the Dravanian Forelands. They flew across the lands, settling and learning under the shadow of the huge mountain that eventually came to be known as Som Arl in Dragonspeak, or a promised slumber in the Eorzean tongue. The mountain became sacred to the dragons over time, an ancient home to return to, as well as a burial ground for the dragons return to the star. Following the settlement of the Holy Sea of Ishgard, the dragons and the Elidzen of Ishgard entered into what would become a near eternal conflict known as the Dragonsong War. But before the war broke out in its entirety, a modicum of peace was obtained thanks to the actions of a woman known as Shiva. She began contact with a great dragon known as Resvelga, eventually leading to their great emotions for one another, and Resvelga would one day consume Shiva to make their souls one. As neither side of the war wished to strike the foe who harboured the soul of the other, the war ceased and peace was attained. The aftermath of this peace can be seen in the Forelands, as many now ruined buildings show statues depicting dragons, as well as the spires known as Annex Trine, where dragons again make their home. The Warrior of Light, Estinian and Alphano, managed to make contact with his Ao Iceheart, and following her own explanation of the original peace with the dragons, the unlikely group sets forth towards the Forelands. On arrival, we begin to travel towards Tailfeather and meet with Marsh Shop, the leader of the small settlement. We ask her advice for travelling through the lands, and he warns us that although consorting with dragons is not unheard of for his ale, the true threat upon the road are the Nath, who recently had become restless, even skirmishing with dragons face to face. We set off around towards Annex Trine, home to Vidofnir, a draconic friend of his Aeols. Defeating the Nath along the way, we arrive at the entrance to the towers, where Izael calls upon the Vidofnir, who descends from the skies. Izael requests that the group be granted an audience with Reisvelga, and bids the dragon open the way to Som Arl, but Vidofnir refuses, as although the path would be welcome to one such as Izael, the Nath are much too restless and aggressive to have her leave the post to Annex Trine, citing that the creatures are now under the influence of their god, yet another primal. Still being scions, Alphano and the Warrior of Light share a glance and spring into action. Alphano asks that if the primal were quelled, could the path be reopened to the mountain peaks? Vidofnir is doubtful, reminding us that these creatures have been moving toe to toe with the dragons themselves, but bids us try our hearts away. Following this, we begin to establish relations with a branch of the Nath known as the Non-Mind, who explain that most of their race share a level of consciousness in the sense that even if a single Nath were alerted to the presence of the Scions, their fellows would also be aware thanks to the Overmind. After some discussion within the group, Alphano determines that the Nath summoned their god merely for an advantage in the fight against the dragons, and like so many other primals by this point, the creature must be destroyed. Izael volunteers to assist the Warrior of Light thanks to her protection via the Echo, but without being able to call forth the primal, the effort amounts to naught. She decides instead to take the Warrior of Light with her to the Nath Hive, and put up a small amount of resistance to alert them to their presence, and in turn hopefully have them call forth their god. This plan works out reasonably well, as the pair are surrounded by the Nath and taken to the outer area of Thok Ast Thok, where the four-armed, four-blade-wielding primal known as Ravana comes forth. After Izael fails to fail the primal, the Warrior of Light and their companions tackle the beast. Ravana stays true to his agreement to withdraw Nath's troops, and we return to the non-mind camp to bring the news to Alphano and Astinian. After this, we finally return to Vidofnir at Annex Trine, who is astonished at our accomplishment in quelling the primal, but agrees to lead us to the entrance of Som Arl, provided we can negotiate the cavern known as Morn, and handle the enemies within. After venturing through the glowing cavern, we reach Halo, where a shrine to the dragons lies. Vidofnir lands before the group, and warns again that although visitors to Somal have not been seen for a thousand years, the presence of outsiders will not be welcomed, 
especially by the followers of Nidhogg, who may see it as blasphemous. After this, Isael and Nestidian bicker once more about the approach unto the mountain, but Alphine reminds them that their cause must remain as one if we are to defeat the looming threat awaiting above. Arriving upon the base of the Skyward Mountain, we proceed along the path strewn with odd flora, spiked ridges and crystal formations on either side. We reach a cluster of plant-like foes, with a large bulb known as a drake spur sending forth clusters of pollenous bulbs. After cutting down the drake spur, the thorned vines open and we come into contact with two more of the same. After clearing away the remainder of the enemies and the two large bulbs, we arrive at Greenlin where a large Ochu known as Raskovnik awaits. This boss notably is named after a rumoured magical herb in Slavic folklore. During the fight, the creature uses its pollen to attract nearby Dravanian hornets to its maw. The hornets move slowly towards the Ochu, while the latter also pulls a party member close and attempts to devour them. If the hornet manages to reach Raskovnik, it is consumed by the creature, causing it to hit harder and spitting the remains of the hornet at the party. Upon defeat, the party proceeds further up into the caverns of the mountain, entering the area known as the Veins. The area appears scorched in places and glows with a bright red-orange glow, similar to the formations seen in Mordona. As we proceed through the area, a red dragon descends and begins to spit fire at the party before landing and battling the group. Before being able to be slain, however, the dragon takes flight and flees deeper into Somal, we reach a cavern known as the Blue Crypt, where this time a blue dragon descends, spitting freezing ice around the area, which in turn summons forth glacier sprites. Similarly to the red dragon, the blue dragon eventually lands and after a short skirmish flees once more deeper into the mountain. After this we make our way to the area known as the Wound, where a scalekin known as Mayath awaits. During this fight, the key elements used by the beast are the slimes called forth from the depths. Each slime has a corresponding colour, and Miath attempts to scoop up a slime with its tail and launch it at a party member. The red slime requires the party to group together, while the blue slime requires them to spread apart. The green slime, the chime of the mountain, is not eaten, but instead channels an extremely dangerous ability which can heavily harm the party unless the slime is handled. After Mayath falls, we exit the cave and proceed up to a higher shelf of the mountain known as Betrayal. Interestingly, there are several marks of man-made structures strewn along the path here, indicating that perhaps elders of the past were allowed passage during the time of peace. We battle along the path until we reach a blockage of rocks, which is then broken apart by a large wyvern. When the wyvern falls, a yellow-skinned dragon lands before the party and upon its defeat, the previous red and blue dragons descend once more, unleashing both their abilities at once. They then land and battle the party together, but appear wounded from the previous fight. Finally, the party can proceed up the stairs and inclines towards Hess Afar, where the current watcher of the sacred grounds awaits. We are approached by Tiamun, 
the consort of Nidhogg himself. And although Izael tries to reason with the dragon to allow safe passage, the dragon returns a powerful roar and prepares to do battle. It's worth noting that Tiamun is named after the legend of Tiamun Island, in which the island was said to be the resting place of a beautiful dragon princess. It is said that while flying to visit her prince, she stopped to view the crystal clear waters of the China Sea and was so enraptured by the charms of the look that she decided to stop her journey. She then took the form of the island and pledged to offer shelter to those passing. During the fight with Tiamen, however, she unleashes many chaotic abilities spreading across her whole stage. Chaos Blast places an asterisk-like spread of magic across the room at random, and her comet must be avoided by gaining as much distance from the epicenter of the blast. When injured, Tiamen's wings begin to glow, and her body becomes invulnerable to attacks. The wings must be destroyed by the party while avoiding Heaven's Fall, the ability that cools down multiple meteors and comets alike upon the party. After her wings are both destroyed, and her attacks revert to the chaotic kind, Tiamun is finally defeated. After Tiamun falls, the Warrior of Light experiences a vision, restoring the light to their crystal of Earth. The trio of companions approach from behind, and after Astinian confirms the absence of more dragons, he experiences an intense fury from Nidhogg, feeling it through his stolen eye. He tells us that the rage is terrible, and Alphano suggests the party continues on to the summit of Somal, which results in the group arriving at the churning mists, far above the clouds. And that's the end of the story and lore of Somal. A once well-travelled path seemingly used by many to ascend to the heights of the churning mists, as well as another shrine dedicated to the once bound friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy XIV lore, and I'll see you next time for the Aerie.